In this video, I'll be going through the steps and stages of splitting the headlights on the Colt CZT um, to paint the inside chrome trim and to also add a few little extras um, to it. So the lens itself um, has some metal retainer clips around the light. There's two along the top and then one along this side here. Uh, they need to be removed and then I'll use a heat gun and gently heat around the edge of the light um, and then use a, a flathead screwdriver or a trim tool um, to prise the plastic lens apart. And there we have it split apart. So I started off in the corner here. Uh, you may be able to see the initial marks I made with the flathead screwdriver, so just be very careful when doing it. I ended up using um, a trim removal tool instead. Um, applied heat along this uh, top corner here first, um, and then once I was able to pull this corner out far enough, I then slid the flathead screwdriver down, heated up again more, and I was able to just pull it apart. So, as you can see, hopefully, if I can get the camera angle right, um, the lens isn't perfect. There is some uh, oxidation on the top corner here. Um, so, these will need to be refurbed at some point, well, towards the end of the, uh, the project. Um, but I have got a YouTube video on my channel uh, showing the step-by-step -step, um, procedure for refurbing your lenses so I'll link that at the top so I'll just put that to one side for now so the next thing to do is to remove this chrome trim bezel whatever you want to call it um, so there's two screws one here and one there a little internal drive Torx uh, once they're removed, there's a tab at the top here. Hopefully the camera will be able to see that. Um, tab there, um, I believe that just needs to be pushed in. And then the whole um, interior, in, interior, inside trim will then be removed. So you'll need a T20 uh, Allen key screwdriver uh, socket bit doesn't matter to remove the screws There we have it. So the plan is to key up this uh, chrome trim here and paint it black. Um, most people go for gloss black, which is fine. I suppose you could go matte, satin, whatever. It tickles your pickle. But I'll be going uh, Ford Panther black to match the interior trims that I've painted. So. One side. It's the uh, inner gubbins of the headlight. Um, right. So the plan is in there for a sec. Um, the plan is to fit some angel eyes to the headlights. So I've done some measuring, and I've got these lamps here so the small ones are 90 mil and the larger one is 120 mil you may spot the um, mistake or issue 
is that this inner bezel here for the dip beam, um, you got this curve here for the indicator. So you could fit a smaller ring on the inside, but I wasn't too keen on how that looks. Um, same for the the high beam. Um, so what I'll do is where it curves round and where it fouls at the moment, I'll cut a slot and um, that way I'll be able to sink, slide in the ring so then it appears on the inside of the trim. So when the, the rings are lit up, um, it'll just be a tiny bit where it goes through um, this chrome trim that you won't be able to see and same for the the first one at the front but you'll see where it cut off um, on the edge there but I have seen it done before on the forum post uh, it does, does look quite good to be fair um, I think that's going to be the best approach rather than using the smaller ones right and another idea I've had um, again, which I've seen people do on the owners club is um, to fit a long LED strip here, which is a switchback LED. So I'll splice it into the side light circuit. So there'll be a constant white DRL. And then when the indicators are then turned on, it will then be a sweeping um, sequential, I suppose is the correct term. Um, indicator starting from the front going up the top so with the rings mocked up and knowing that i need to make an incision on here i've now cut the plastic to allow the ring to sit through the trim so if i loosely hold it in place obviously that's not where the wiring will eventually go but just for testing purposes give you an idea while I was at it we also started to key up the surface ready for paint um, still need a little bit more to do but I thought I'd, uh, as I had some spare time start with that all right let me uh, quickly rig up the battery and I'll show you a tester so I've got the the battery test leads all connected the rings are loosely in position There we go. Very, very bright. So yeah, the plan is to um, use some th very thin wire to help secure the rings into position. Um, I have pre-drilled some holes already. Um, down here in this corner um, and I need to drill them up in here and then same for the back one in the corners um, so yeah hopefully you shouldn't really see the wire that's holding it in place originally I was going to use hot glue but the problem is the lights aren't completely flat on the back um, and obviously there's very minimal material here to rely on the, the glue to make contact. So um, watched a few YouTube videos. Other people seem to be using the wire. Uh, obviously it does work. So yeah, fingers crossed it all works out. So I started to reassemble the headlights. Uh, you may have noticed that this is the opposite side to the beginning part of the video. Uh, so the rings are now mounted. I've used some 0.4 millimeter wire, like often B and Q. Um, I suppose any other hardware store would 
probably sell it. I did originally try uh, one mil, uh, but it was way too thick for me to twist. So this sort of stuff um, seemed to have worked a lot better. Uh, the DRL switchback is mounted in place. Um, luckily, it did curve round quite nicely because there was a bit of a curve on this edge here. Um, had to make a slit on the very edge here uh, to allow the uh, ribbon to, to feed through. Uh, originally I was hoping it was just going to be wire so I would just drill a hole but um, yeah unfortunately not able to do so. So I'll get the battery hooked up and we'll give it a go. So first I'll attach the side lights for the switch back. So this will be side light, um, so the DRL to begin with. Hopefully if this allows me. Then when the indicators are on, it will then be this. Brilliant. So I'm glad that all works now. I have uh, figured out the wiring for inside the headlight. So I just need to uh, double check uh, test the the wiring again. Um, I have got a power probe, but my friend Mikey kindly let me. But it may be difficult to to demonstrate and be at the back of the light to to actually probe. So um, yeah, I'll figure something out. So yeah, brilliant news that it's all working. Um, now to carry on. Right, I've got the wiring all spliced in. Um, everything's loosely back together. Uh, the indicator lens is currently being painted, so that's why that's missing at the moment. But let's connect the power probe. Right, so first one should be dip beam. Yep, um, and then if we try high beam, yep, so then side light, so this should now be DRL, nope that's that, that's the thump. Obviously, I'll remove the bowl eventually, and then indicator if this will fit. which is on a separate circuit of how to
There we are. And there we have it. The units. <coughs> Excuse me. Are now back together. Um, the lenses were quite damaged. I mean, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you can still see some very fine scratches. Uh, did go over them numerous times with various grey sandpaper, but I don't know whether I picked up a bit of grit or something while I was doing it, I'm not too sure. This time round I had um, a body shop uh, 2k lacquer them for me instead um, just to give a better finish. I mean they are clearer than the previous set. So yeah. Uh, now I just need to remove the original lights off the car and wire in the halos. Um, the switch is already wired in, just need to connect it to the fuse box um, and then connect the, the headlight wiring to the wiring inside the car. But the units are now on the car. Apologies about the reflection. Really hard to get it all focused. So I'll set the tripod up and I'll give you a demonstration.
that concludes the build. So uh, very happy with how it's turned out. Um, never done it before. Um, I've obviously tinkered with electrics before, but nothing to this, to this extent. Um, I have found a slight issue with the driver's side indicator. Um, while I was testing it on the car, uh, for some reason it now hyper flashes, um, but it's fine on a hazard switch. Um, passenger side light is uh, operates absolutely fine, um, which is a bit strange. So I need to investigate that further. So, um, which means taking the light apart again and seeing what the issue is. Um, I'm hoping it's just a bad connection, um, but yeah, who knows? Um, could be a, a iffy light. I mean, one of the light strips was replaced. Um, because it was faulty, um, I can't remember if that was that side or not, but um, yeah, I'll look into it. It still flashes, um, it doesn't go all the way up, um, obviously, it flashes quicker because of the hyper flash, um, but yeah, no idea. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to find out. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much. Cheers.